In this video, we're going to talk about something called irregular items, uh, which is a concept that might come up when you're discussing an income statement. So when we think about net income, we think about, well, what are the different uses for net income, right? So we think, well, why do we, why do we put together uh, an income statement? What are we doing? What are analysts doing? Uh, what, do, what do analysts care about net income for? Uh, well, we think about that this has kind of predictive power. Right? We're trying to predict, we're trying to say, what will earnings be next quarter, next year? Uh, we're trying to think of your know, future net income. Right? We want to know what's happening to this firm in terms, is it enhancing its wealth? Is it destroying wealth? We want to think about those things. And, and the reason this is important in terms of this idea of irregular items is because a lot of different things go into net income. Right? This is the bottom line. Right, so all these different things, gains, losses, revenue, expenses, all these different things go into net income. And so if we're trying to predict future net income, then we might say, hey, wait a minute. Uh, we've got all these different things going in there, and what we really want to do is focus on things that are most likely to be recurring, to happen again, right? We want to know what's net, net income going to be next year. So we want to take our net income today and kind of drill down and focus on these recurring items, items that are uh, likely to happen again, to happen in year two, in year three, in year four. Because if there's some kind of transaction in here that's just going to be kind of a, a one-time uh, thing, if it's just like, oh, well, this, this once, we, we had this issue uh, you know, we had some kind of earthquake or something and it destroyed one of the, the buildings, but that's, that's not a recurring thing. It's not going to happen again. Well, if we leave that in that income, that's going to make it harder to predict future net income because it's kind of making it noisy. It's, it's kind of throwing off our prediction because that's, that's not likely to happen again. So we, we might then say, okay, well, wait a minute. What if we could kind of tease out of net income? Uh, some of these these one-time items and just focus on uh, these recurring items, maybe then we can do a better job predicting uh, net income in the future. So then the question becomes, okay, well, when we put together the income statement, uh, should we even include these one-time items or should we just exclude those altogether? And, and, and that's where this idea of irregular items is, comes into play, right? Is, is we're trying to look at items that, that are really kind of one-time issues and trying to figure out how do we deal with them. So when you think about irregular items, there's, there's six different categories of irregular items. And I, I'd like to just walk through them briefly so you have an idea uh, when you see you know, some of these things on an, on an income statement or you see them in the financial statements uh, be, because most of them, the, the FASB has decided that, yes, they should be dealt with. They should be recognized in, in some way. We can't just uh, kind of throw them out. For the most part, they are going to be uh, recognized in the financial statements. So when we think about uh, these irregular items, one, one very popular one you'll see is called discontinued operations. So when we think about discontinued operations, really what you're doing is you're selling off, you sell off a component or a unit. You sell off some kind of component of your business, right? It's, it's not just like you sold a truck or something like that, all right? It's, it's an entire component. It's a unit. It's some, some, some other, it's, it's a lot bigger than, uh, than just one piece, right? It's not just one asset. It's kind of a collection of assets that are making money for the business or not making money. Maybe they're generating a loss. And what you've done is you're, you're, you're getting rid of that component of your business. And so therefore, uh, because you're getting rid of it, it it's not going to affect future net income, right? It's, 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 it's going to be gone. And so what you do is you kind of separate it out and say, okay, this is part of discontinued operations. This is, you've got, you've got kind of your continuing operations. You've got all that. And then you say, but wait a minute, we've got these discontinued operations that technically uh, they go into this, this net income too, but we want to separate them out so you can see that they're just, they're just one time. Uh, it's, well, I, they're, they're not any longer going to be uh, recurring or affecting future year uh, so, so then you can go and say, well, maybe we'll use this continuing operations as a better predictor of what the future uh, net income will be. 
So when we think about about some other uh, items that will be at, at, as a, in a regular item, uh, we think about extraordinary items. Now, extraordinary items are, are a little bit different, right? So I, I guess we could say that discontinued operations technically weren't necessarily one time. Uh, we could maybe say that was the last time that we were going to be including them because you might have had that, that component for years and years and you're just getting rid of it and saying, okay, it's not going to be recurring. Uh, but with an extraordinary item, uh, really the idea is this is something, this is some kind of infrequent, uh, infrequent and unusual. It has to be both to be an extraordinary item. Some kind of infrequent and unusual, uh, some kind of casualty or some kind of event. Now we think of like the classic example of this, uh, we can think about an earthquake. So, or we think, of, let, let, let's give an example. So in the United States, Hurricane Katrina, uh, Six Flags, it lost uh, one of its um, amusement parks in uh, in New Orleans. So we think about something like that. Okay, is that infrequent? Well, yes. Obviously, every single year they're not going to lose. Uh, we would hope they're not going to lose an amusement park due to some natural disaster. Uh, and is that unusual? Yes. So so we think. Okay, this is something. This is some kind of act of God or something. Uh, so that's that. But it has to be both. It has to be infrequent and unusual. And that's an important distinction. Uh, and again, this would be something that you'd have continued operations, you'd have discontinued operations, and then you'd have extraordinary items, and then you'd have net income at the bottom. So again, it's it's been kind of separated out to show, okay, this isn't recurring. Uh, but when we think about this this distinction between infrequent and unusual, it's important because we have another category called unusual gains and losses. And for unusual gains and losses, it's also got this this infrequent, unusual uh, distinction, but it's or instead of instead of having to have both. Now we just need to have one. Okay, so we think about well, what what kind of thing would be would be in this category? We might think about something like a restructuring charge, right? So the firm is laying off employees or something like that, uh, and the firm says, okay, well, we we've got this. It's it's uh, it meets one of these criteria, but not both. Uh, so this is it's an unusual gain or loss. It'd usually be presented uh, above discontinued operation. It'd be in continuing operations potentially, uh, but it, or or maybe they sometimes maybe they separate it out below that. I guess it depends on the firm, but it's it's not going to be a part of discontinued operations. It's not going to be an extraordinary item, but it will be one of the things that goes into net income. Uh, so it's some kind of infrequent or unusual event. So another thing. That is a regular item is is a change in accounting principle. When we think, okay, well, what what are we talking about here? Well, there could be a lot of different things that would go into this, and these are actually quite frequent. Um, so when we think about a change in principle, think about something like inventory method. Inventory method. So let's say that a firm says we're going to go from FIFO to LIFO for inventory method. So that's going to have an effect, right? I mean, that's going to change the way we're costing our inventory, and that's going to affect our cost of goods sold. And, and, and when we do this, we're actually going to say, okay, well, what we have to do is we have to go back and restate our financial uh, statements for the uh, previous periods, right? And what that's called, it's called retrospective adjustment. Retrospective. Now, because our net income and cost of goods sold would have been different in previous periods we go back and restate the financial statements for those periods assuming that we would have the new uh, so the new accounting principle that, that we're following or the new method so let's say lifo in this case we go back and restate those financial statements as if we'd been using lifo all along so these changes in accounting principle, like these other irregular items, we don't just we don't just ignore uh, what's going on here. We actually go and, and restate these financial statements as if this this accounting principle had been followed all along. And so another irregular item is a change in, in estimate, and we can think about this as something like, uh, for example, bad bad debt. So let's say that that you normally say, oh well, bad debt is uh, 5%, that's what we estimate. Uh, but then, oh, wait a minute, we, we, we made a mistake. Uh, it actually it actually should have been 10%. We, we just, 
Uh, we we just you know we came up with the best estimate we could at five percent, but now we really see that it, it really should have been ten. Uh, and we want to make a change uh, to this estimate. Now in this case, uh, you do not do this uh, retrospective. You you don't do that. You just kind of you just fix it and move on. You just fix it and move on. So you just you just say okay, well what what is what is the effect? What is the effect? And, and then let me just have bad debt expense this period to, to reflect that effect. I'm just going to catch up on whatever it is that I missed and just dump it all into this current period. And this is not seen as a mistake. This is, I, I mean, I guess I said, I mean, you, you say that obviously you did make a mistake. You didn't make the right estimate. What I mean is not, or I should say, it's not an error, right? It's, we don't consider this an accounting error. And the reason is that we have a separate uh, item that is called a correction of an error. And when, when we say error, I should be very careful using my words here. When we think of error, we think it could, this could be a lot of things. It could be a math mistake or you miscalculated revenue. Uh, but in a lot of cases, it could be you actually did something wrong. You had, let's say, improper revenue recognition. right? So you weren't supposed to recognize some revenue, but you did. That's an error. And now, again, you have to go back and do this, this, this retrospective adjustment. And you have to restate, just like with a change in accounting principle, you have to restate the financial statements for the prior periods. And so, so this, this change in estimate is, I, I mean, you, you obviously you didn't, you didn't choose the right estimate, but it's not technically an error. So the idea is you don't have to actually, you do not restate. But then we actually have a specific category for errors where you actually did, you know, the, the wrong mathematical calculation or you, you re recognize revenue when you shouldn't have. And that you actually restate as you would uh, with a change in accounting principle. And these are the six categories uh, of irregular items.